Hello friends, welcome to the Brain Mentors. I am Amit and today we are going to learn ES2020 features. Let's start with the feature number one. The feature number one is Nullish Operator and for Nullish we are going to use double question mark sign. So this operator returns right hand side value when its left hand side value is null or undefined. Otherwise it returns left hand side value. This operator is work with undefined null and undefined null are the nullish values. So it does not, doesn't work with nan or blank values or zero. So let's start with an example to understand more. So I go to Chrome browser and I go to the about blank section and in the console section, let's understand this nullish thing. So let's say I start with an object called company. So I create a company object and inside this company object, I will specify a key called name and I just put brain mentors inside it. And then I specify a key called address and inside address, I will put a key city. So I have nested object that is the address one. Now I want, I try to print Let's say I want to print company with address, but I don't want to print the city. I just try to print country. And as we know, this country is not defined because there is no key present name called country. So it will return undefined. So suppose I want to treat this thing. I don't want to print undefined. I want to print something meaningful if the key is missing. So before ES 2020, Developers use truthy and falsy feature. How it will work? We will use company dot address dot country. And as we know, this key is not present. So we'll use an or operator. And this country is basically just checking if this key is present. So it will, it is acting as a truthy. If it is not, so it is acting as a false C. So instead of this, when it is false C, I will print this India. Right. So because this country is undefined, so it is treated as falsy. So it will print India for me. Now with nullish operator, because instead of using this pipe symbol, we use nullish operator, which is provided in ECMA 2020. So now the syntax is like this. We'll use company dot address dot country. And then we will have this double question mark. That's a nullish operator and I will print India here and here it is. So here you understand how this nourish operators are working. The major difference between the nourish operator and with a pipe, nourish only work for undefined and null, where your pipe will work as a truthy and falsy and it will work for zero blank nan undefined and null so it is not entirely for the nullish thing but this is specifically for the nullish thing that is the main difference moving to the feature number two that is optional chaining operator when you have nested object property and might be your property is null or undefined then it is very dangerous to access. It generate type error. It says your property is undefined. Now how to treat this kind of errors? We have optional chaining operator for this. So let's understand with an example. So for example, I have this company object, which we created in a previous example, and I want to access some property, which is actually not available. For example, I am going to try to access something company.address.country and let's say I want to make this country in uppercase. So when I treat to do this uppercase, it will say a typed error because this country is undefined. So here it is. So we can understand this thing because this country field is not there and we are going to access that field. It will it generate an error because that field is not available. 
so previously developer is how developer is trading before ECMA 2020 so before this optional chaining operator the developers are using like this they're using the feature called truthy and falsy for this they are using something called company dot and let's say address and let's say if you have this field then they will mark it as a truthy and then it will check company dot address then dot country if the, both of them are true i mean the address we have and we have the country and now i will say if both of them are true then i will do the uppercase otherwise i would not so i just put it this thing inside some if condition let's say i just put this thing inside some if if this is present so i will say console.log and just do company dot address dot country dot to uppercase if the country is present then do this stuff otherwise if it is not present then go to the else condition and inside this else condition i will say console.log it means if it is not present so i will say country not present let's say so this is the way out to treat right so it is saying company not present because we know this country this country is not present that's why it is saying this country is not present so if for example if this country is present so i just make it company we have then address we have and then i just put a country and let's say i will put some value i will put india here and let's say now i will retreat this thing so it will say now we have the capital india right now the shorthand feature that is a chaining operator so how will use this optional chaining i will say company and then i just simply use question mark and then dot so this question mark say it's an optional and it is, it is just checking if the company is not undefined or uh, not a null thing then it will look up for this address if same thing it means address is present it is not null it is not undefined then it will do this question mark dot and then i will say i want to pick the country right so it is saying this country is present so for example if i am going to pick something let's say i will say address one which is not present at all and i am i am going to access the country so it would not generate any error it will just return me undefined so this is how this operator is working and it is pretty much make your job very very easier compared to writing this kind of if conditions we use this optional chaining operator for this now moving to the feature number three that is global this so what is global this in javascript we have a global window object in node.js we have a global object and in web worker we have a self object so we have different objects for a different platform so if you want a standard object which is across common for all the platforms we have a feature called global this in ecma 22 so i just go to my terminal and if i print if i do node so i am activate this node and then if i type global so it is showing this is a global object which is provided in node but if i go to this chrome v8 engine and if i type here window window is a, a global one now but we have something called global this now if i use global this so it will show it is referred to the window always and global this is now it's a standard so it is available in your chrome as well as and it is acting like a window this time and if i if i do window here so it is saying uh, it's true so it is equal to the windows and if i test this thing here so if i type here that is global this so this global this is again equivalent to the global of node so it's a standard version for all the platforms so there is no need to write different treatment for different platforms we can use a global this as a standard moving to the feature number four that is promise dot all settled so this is a new feature added in the promise in previous feature we have promise dot all which actually reject if any of the promises get rejected 
so it is actually work when you have all the successful promises if any any of the promises get rejected it is in, it is entirely reject the promises now if, if you compare with promise dot all settled it just wait for all the promises to the settle either it is resolved or either it is rejected so it will wait to settle the all the promises so let's see with an example how this promise dot all settled will work so let's move to our browser and here i will create a function and i just named it cube and let's say i want to compute a cube of a number but i want to compute a cube of a number in a async fashion so i just do set timeout for this and in this set timeout i will create a callback function and i just say resolve and in this resolve let's say i will say it is it is going to do a cube of a number and it will do a cube after let's say 3 second so this set timeout will be called after 3 second and because this is an async function so i will just keep this function inside some promise object so i will create a promise object and as we know it required two arguments resolve and reject and inside this resolve and reject i will i will just do this stuff i, I want this set timeout will be get called and this would be get resolved so i just use this set timeout here and if the promise i mean this promise is doing this resolve and reject, reject stuff and after 3 second this is get resolved so it is not right now it is not get rejected so i i just put a condition here if let's say if the number if the number is equals to equals to 5 so i will put a case of rejection so for otherwise it will do the cube but if it is a 5 so it will just reject the result so in this reject i will say rejected due to 5 let's say so i have the resolve case i have the rejected case inside this function and this function is going to return a promise there is a pr and suppose i want to call this function for calling this function i will say i, I want to call with p1 and i will call cube with a 2 so in this case it is resolved because it's a 2 and p2 equals to cube 3 so it is also get resolved and i have something called p3 and i just say cube 5 so in this case it will be get rejected so i just keep this thing inside a new method that is promise dot all settled not all because all in in case of all i i said this all will work only if all the promises is get resolved if any one of them rejected so it would not be get continue but all settled will wait for a result until it is it is resolved or until it is get rejected and i just make it in this array so i create an array of promises and i just put it inside this all setter and now it will fire all all of the promises one one by one so the promise one promise two the promise three all of them are uh, keep executing a parallel fashion and if it is get resolved then the then will be work and inside the then it will give a res res result to me so let's say i will get a result so i will say console.log and i have a result res right so whatever the result is coming it will get, it is it will be going to print if it is successful if it is not successful then it will generate a catch and inside the catch i will say console.log and i will just print an error that's it so this is the all settled and it is going to call all of the promises in a parallel fashion and then will be work if all all of them are i mean if the successful case and if it is error case then the catch will work so in in our three promises two of them are successful and one of them is the unsuccessful so let's see the result so i just make it result then comma result that's it and in case of error i just make it error so it will prompt where we are i mean the printing is in error or is it is it as a result so i just make a call and it will wait for a 3 second and in 3 second it will complete 
these all of these three calls because this is in the parallel fashion so let's see the result so it is saying the state of it is pending because it is taking three seconds oops it's a resolve i i just typed resolved in a mistaken way this this is the problem so i i just do i just go here and i just simply say resolve here and i just run it so that's a typo mistake and i just run it it is wait for a three second and then it, it will prompt you this is the result and it is inside the result it will say if because all of them is worked and it is saying two of them is fulfilled and one is get rejected and it will it is showing the reason and it is showing the values and these all are three is a is a part of response because there is no error in the promise right there is a only resolve and rejection right so it's a successful case for me and that's why it is in a then and in then we get all of these three promises now the point is if i treat this the same stuff with all right so we will understand the difference between so if i use all so in case of all if it any of them is get rejected it has rejected the whole promise so when once it is get rejected the whole promise let's see so you will see it is immediately saying rejected right so it would not go in the resolve case like this and it would not show two of them are fulfilled and one is get rejected but it is treated as a whole promise as a rejected that's the difference between all and all all settled right last but not least feature number five begin So big int is a numeric data type in JavaScript, and this is coming in ES twenty twenty. This actually represents whole number larger than two raised to power fifty three. So how this big int is working? Let's see with an example. In JavaScript, if you define a variable like this, and if you specify a number dot maxif integer, so it will give you the maximum integer value which it can contain. So it it means it's a maximum numeric value. So if you just check it out, type of e, it's a number. And if you print this value, this is the highest value it, it can have. Now, if I do increment of this, it is, if you keep incrementing, you will see your value would not be get incremented. You are on a maximum value, right? So because that's a, that's a limit of your number type. So number cannot have larger values, but from ECMA 2020, they introduced something called big int. And now you can have the value like this you can define the same value let's say i start with this value and i just put it n here so this represent n represent the big int value and if i do f plus plus or plus plus f it will keep incrementing the value and you will get the incremented result so this is a new type they have introduced and if you just check it out type of f so it will say it's a big int type right so it is it is recommended if you have a large set of values and you want to store bigger values then you have big int that's all guys to watch more videos on latest trends in technology do subscribe our channel